Hi everyone, this is Dr. Michael Leahy with the ESRI Canada Education and Research Group. Right now many students and educators are looking for solutions to access ArcGIS desktop software while working remotely. While a simple solution for this is to install ArcGIS desktop software such as ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro on your personal computer, this may not be an option for you if you do not have the necessary hardware or are using a computer with a Mac or Linux operating system. If you're in this situation, then this video will show you how you can launch and use a virtual machine in the Azure cloud using a machine image provided by Esri that is pre-configured with ArcGIS desktop software, including ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro. Many students may already have access to Microsoft Azure through their school accounts. If you are unsure if you have this, check with your school's IT services to determine this and see if you can acquire an account with a budget of credits for use with Azure services. Microsoft also provides free student accounts with an annual budget of credits that you can use if you do not have one through your school already. Once you have an Azure account set up, you will be able to access the Microsoft Azure portal seen here at portal.azure.com. If you are using a PC with Windows 8.1 or later, a convenient option to launch ArcGIS desktop VMs in Azure is to use the ArcGIS Enterprise Cloud Builder application. However, anyone with a web browser can create a virtual machine directly from the Azure web portal. To get started, open the virtual machine sections and begin by adding a new virtual machine. On the following screen, you're prompted for details for creating this virtual machine. You'll need to specify a resource group that will store all of the resources related to the machine. You'll need to give your machine a name. And you'll want to specify the region where your machine will be hosted. For Canada, the best one to choose would be the Canada Central Data Center. Next, you'll want to select the machine image you're going to use. To get the prepackaged ArcGIS Desktop software, search for ArcGIS Desktop, and you should find the ArcGIS Desktop 10.8 machine image. Next, you'll want to select the size of your virtual machine. There's a variety of different sizes of virtual machines that you can choose in Azure. You'll need to make sure that the capacity of the machine that you choose is appropriate for the tasks that you're going to be performing, depending on whether you need to use ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro, and whether you want to use the 3D capabilities in ArcGIS Pro. Pay attention to the monthly cost. If you leave your machine running 100% of the time, those are the estimates for that machine. And next, you'll need to specify the login that you'll use when you access the machine. So this is the login that will appear with the remote desktop interface when you want to access your machine. On the next screen, you can choose additional disks. A virtual machine created from the ArcGIS desktop image will come pre-configured with 128 gigabyte disk attached to it. You'll likely want to specify a static IP address so that when your machine starts and stops, it will consistently have the same IP address. In the management section, uh, something you'll want to look at is configuring an auto shutdown policy. So this ensures that your machine will not run 100% of the time if you aren't using it. If you shut down your machine when it's not in use, that will save costs and it'll allow you to continue working with it over a longer period of time without impacting your budget as much. You can skip through the next few screens, accepting the defaults, and on the last screen, you'll see a review and you'll see the estimate of the hourly charge for running this virtual machine. When you're ready, click create. And then within a few minutes, which I will edit out here for your benefit, you will have a virtual machine created and ready for access. Prior to editing, this entire process took me approximately six minutes. Once your virtual machine is actually ready, you can visit the resource at any time in your Azure web portal, and you can see its details here. Your machine will be assigned a public IP address that you can use to connect to it from remote desktop clients. Although if you prefer, you can assign a name that will be allocated to your machine under the Azure domain name system. If you're, the name you choose is available, then you can assign that to your machine and you can use that to access your remote desktop connection instead of using an IP address.
you can use the host name or the IP address with any compatible remote desktop client. The default port, unless you configure otherwise, is 3389. And you'll need to provide either the IP address or the host name with a backslash ahead of your username when you log in. Enter the password that you provided when you set up the virtual machine. And you will have direct access to the desktop on this machine through this remote desktop connection. Once you've accessed this desktop, you'll be able to access all of the ArcGIS software that has been pre-installed for you with this machine image. If you're going to be using ArcMap, then you'll need to license the ArcGIS software using the ArcGIS administrator. Typically, this will be done using a single-use licensing code. And you can authorize this directly over the internet by choosing the Authorize Now option in the License Administrator filling out all of the details in this registration form and at the appropriate prompt enter the single use license code that you've been provided. If you have licenses for additional extensions you can specify them here otherwise just proceed and you will have your software licensed within a few seconds and then you're ready to get started working with ArcMap. If you intend to work with ArcGIS Pro, you can access that as well. When you load ArcGIS Pro for the first time, when you're prompted to license the software, you'll initially need to allow the ArcGIS.com domain to be accessed. And you could choose to license this in a, a couple different ways. If you've been provided with a single use license code, you can instruct ArcGIS Pro to use that in the licensing settings here. However, if you have access to a named user account, it's easier to log in. So if you accept the default settings, you can enter your username and password and license pro just with your account. Notice that the default version of ArcGIS Pro that's pre-packaged with this machine image is version 2.4. If you want the latest version 2.5, you'll need to upgrade the Microsoft.NET framework on this operating system to version 4.8, and then you can run the upgrade. Keep in mind that ArcGIS Pro is designed to take full advantage of graphics acceleration that's provided by the hardware on most desktop and laptop PCs. However, most virtual machines that you create in Azure will not have GPU acceleration unless you choose a specialized machine type, which will have a high hourly cost. Unless you need to take advantage of ArcGIS Pro's capability to work with 3D data in global or local scene views, you should be fine with a standard machine that has sufficient capacity to work with 2D workflows, although your display performance still won't be as great as a machine that has GPU acceleration. If you need to get a sense of what it'll cost to run a virtual machine given a budget that you have within your account, you can navigate to the Azure website and open up the pricing calculator. Here you can design a virtual machine that matches the characteristics of what you want to create in your account. You'll need to select the region or the data center that your machine will be hosted in. Ensure that you stick with the Windows operating system and select the size of the machine that you want to create. You'll also need to specify the disks that will be attached to this. For the ArcGIS desktop machine image from Esri, you'll need to choose at least one 128 gigabyte disk image and then specify Canadian dollars to uh, show the amount in a Canadian account. Now this is the estimate of running this machine 24 hours a day for an entire month. If you enable an auto shutdown policy or just remember to shut down your virtual machine from the Azure portal interface whenever you're not using it, then you can save a significant portion of this estimated cost and extend the ability to use your virtual machine over a longer period of time within your budget. As you use your machine images in Azure, it's a good idea to monitor the credits that are being used over time. You can do this by opening the resource group that you created when you launched the virtual machine and visiting the cost analysis section. Here you'll see charts that give you insight into the use of credits over time and enables you to plan the use of your virtual machines within the budget that you have available. Details about the ArcGIS desktop machine image in Azure can be found in the online documentation.
Here you'll be referred to the ArcGIS Pro and ArcMap system requirements documents. In these documents, you'll find the minimum supported and recommended hardware capacities that you'll need to run the software. So it's good to refer to these documents when you're choosing the size of the VM that you create in Azure. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or higher ed at esri.ca.